Our oceans are vast, beautiful, and somewhat of a mystery. Beauty lies within the hidden depths. Even now we lack knowledge about the truths of our oceans and what truly lurks within them. Recently, marine biologists have warned that whales, along with other species, have started acting strange, highlighting that more and more beachings are happening around the world. Other creatures that have suddenly started washing up on shores include dolphins, octopuses, and turtles. These are just the latest reports to come from the animal world, and some of these events are confusing scientists. Birds have also been observed across the United States falling from the sky, causing wildlife researchers to conduct their own studies to try and figure out why this is happening. Although a variety of reasons have been put forward, none have been able to explain why so many animals have been observed acting strange. The same is happening with these whale beachings, and many experts who've looked into these events have labelled them as worrying. Scientists have said that the whales that keep on washing up on California beaches are unusual. Throughout the years we have not treated our oceans with the respect it deserves. Now, whales have been washing up on California beaches. So far, more than 20 whales have perished upon the sands of the Golden Coast within the past few months. There's been some confusion over the cause, but researchers have listed several factors, such as the ongoing climate crisis and ships bashing into whales at high speeds, which is wounding or fatally harming them. In the California Bay area, a fin whale and a massive 47-foot pygmy sperm whale were found beached, and even earlier in 2022, four whales washed up on California beaches in less than 10 days. Overall, it's believed that just over a dozen whales have been discovered deceased on beaches in 2022 alone. According to the spokesman for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Michael Milstein, the entire phenomenon is atypical and extremely concerning, yet 2022 was not even the worst year for whales. In 2019, the total number of whales found perished reached 34. In 2021, that number totaled 18. By comparison, this has been a calm year and yet nonetheless worrying. Since 2019, investigations have been ongoing to determine a direct cause for this frighteningly high number. Evidently, our sea life is threatened. Fortunately, the overall population of whales is not yet endangered, but should things continue on this path, there is no telling what could happen to them in the near future. Only six years ago, biologists believed there to be 26,000 whales living in the northern American oceans. By 2022, they believe that the population has fallen to less than 20,000. As of right now, this is still sustainable for a population, but it's rapidly falling. The Biden administration has been urged by oceanic scientists to discuss with the United States Navy reforms of sea life safety codes. Her Majesty's Australian ship was said to have wounded several whales which entered the San Diego naval base, causing them to lose their life. As such, biologists are pleading for the Navy to readjust its rulings when it comes to its treatment of sea creatures. The official statement by the National Marine Fisheries Services was the following. These deceased whales are grisly proof of the Navy's dire ongoing threat to vulnerable marine mammals. We're asking the Biden administration to find a better balance of marine protection with military readiness. End quote. Hopefully, these majestic creatures will be rescued and treated with sufficient care in the future. After the Navy's reluctance to answer to these pleas, the Center for Biological Diversity gave the Navy a notice of their intent to sue if they do not act soon. Navy to re-examine effects of Pacific training exercises. Tied to previous happenings with deteriorating whale populations, the United States Navy has since agreed to re-examine its training practices and oceanic protocols. The United States Navy officially declared that it would look into the consequences of its current place training exercises regarding sea life. Specifically, the United States Navy is going to analyze its impacts on the populations of sea mammals. There are endangered species within regions of Hawaii and Southern California, which scientists are worried will soon become extinct if nothing is done, further saying that the Navy's harmful underwater training protocols remain unrestrained. This change was only implemented after the Center of Biological Diversity made their intent to sue them, with some critics believing that if they had not, the Navy would have continued hurting sea creatures without care for the environmental damage. The intent to sue occurred after the discovery that San Diego's military destroyer vessel took the lives of two fin whales, which were attached to its hull 
as the vessel dragged their carcasses across the waters back to port. This happened in May of 2022, and the fin whales were found to be that of a mother whale and her calf. The Navy claimed that those aboard the military destroyer were not aware of the whales they hit, as they were focused on military training, only discovering the whale bodies once the vessel docked. A coalition was formed between the National Fisheries Service and the Center of Biological Diversity to tackle the rampant issue of fated whales, both deciding that the Navy has to respond to its actions for the sake and future of sea animals in the Pacific. Kristen Monsell, who is the legal director of the Center of Biological Diversity, said the following. We're glad to see the Navy re-examining the harms of its training exercises on these mighty but vulnerable creatures. These military activities can wreak havoc on whales, dolphins and other marine mammals through explosions, sonar and ship strikes. We hope this process leads to new mitigation measures like slowing ships down in important whale habitats. End quote. Although they cannot be blamed for the causation of all fated whales in the Pacific, the Navy's vessel strikes are now a known factor feeding deeper into the problem biologists are desperately trying to solve. Back in April, the Centre petitioned for the federal government to create a speeding limit for ships and boats passing through whale habitats with a maximum 10-knot speed limit on the waves to protect the whales from further danger. Federal records reveal that in the area of the West Coast, more than 26 ship strikes have taken the lives of whales, and this happened within just four years. In nature, whales live as long as humans, meaning that we are their primary cause of their demise. Studies published only in the past few months showcased that vessel strikes are twice as dangerous as we thought them to be and do immense amounts of damage to the creatures caught in their wake. It's theorized that the number of annual vessel strikes could be up to 20 times the recorded number, and this is due to the fact that whales which do not wash up onto beaches sink into the ocean never to be seen on the surface again. Underwater explosions used by the Navy as military practice also damage sea life and put whales and other beings at risk. These explosions may not necessarily wound or take their life, but the aftermath can be horrific with whales falling sick, becoming infertile or disturbing their breeding, ability to feed, or by messing with whale migration cycles. Zooplankton, a building block of all aquatic life, is vastly damaged by the sound of these explosions. Currently, the Navy is protected by a permit granted to them in 2018, which was meant to last five years, but has since been extended to be active until 2025. This permit allows them to be exempt from repercussions regarding any sea mammals, including dolphins and whales that they injure or harm. It states that there will be no repercussions as long as recorded cases of wounded sea life does not exceed 12.5 million. So far, the reported numbers have revealed more than 3,000 various marine mammals have been injured, 20 of which were humpback whales. There have been just under 10,000 cases of wounded or deceased blue whales. Mrs Manning, a marine biologist from the United Kingdom, said that this is something that we are seeing more of, and that in general, sea life behaviour has changed over the last 40 years, and that now we have documented proof of creatures such as whales and dolphins acting differently. She continued by saying that whales are bashing into ships at high speeds, which is in turn causing them damage, and that a large number of marine life seems to be deviating from their usual navigation. Further noting that sometimes these beachings will be caused by injuries, but she said that what some websites fail to mention is that most of the time those injuries are caused by humans, be it via fishing or in regards to the ocean being more cluttered with ships. An interesting study that looked into this found a direct correlation between negative whale behavior and Navy sonar. Although sonar has been an incredibly helpful tool during various points in history, it's safe to say that those who used sonar in the early days were not considering the impact on marine life when first using it. There are two different types of sonar, active and passive. Active sonar, which has been commonly used by navies, involves a device, known as a transducer, that emits a sound pulse into the water. When this sound pulse hits a surface, like a submarine or a whale, the pulse reflects back to the transducer, indicating that there is something in the water. These reflection pulses can then be calculated to determine how far away this object or creature is. Passive sonar, on the other hand, utilizes a system that does not emit sound, and instead listens to detect any sound that comes near it. However, since 2001, it has been determined that active sonar is extremely harmful to whales and other aquatic animals, 
specifically a type of active sonar referred to as low-frequency active sonar. Low-frequency active sonar emits sound at a decibel nearly twice that of a rock concert and can maintain the decibel of a concert for 300 miles underwater. Not only is this incredibly loud, it's severely detrimental to animals who primarily use long-range sound underwater to communicate with each other, to find food, and to navigate. Low-frequency active sonar has led to animals losing contact with other members of their species, to them no longer foraging for food, and to them swimming deep or rising quickly because they are frightened by the sound. Low-frequency active sonar has also caused hearing loss and hemorrhages in whales and dolphins and has contributed to a large amount of strandings, also known as beachings, in which many animals have passed away on land, either due to being beached or to the severe injuries sustained from low-frequency active sonar. This has disproportionately affected beaked whales, a type of whale that typically dives deeper in the ocean. The United States Navy's authorization of using low-frequency active sonar has come under legal battle more than once, and in 2012, it was found that the Navy was in violation of the Marine Mammals Protection Act of 1972. When brought to court, it was ruled that the National Marine Fisheries Service was not doing enough to protect sea life from the Navy, and National Marine Fisheries Service has since put limitations on the Navy's use of low-frequency active sonar. Environmental agencies, such as the Natural Resources Defense Council and other environmental groups, have also limited the Navy's use of active sonar, which is now only supposed to be allowed in mammal-free waters in certain locations. However, despite evidence of its harmful effects on aquatic animals, the Navy is still permitted to use low-frequency active sonar in our oceans. Sonar, which stands for sound navigation and ranging, is a technology that uses sound waves to locate and identify objects in water. Sonar systems are used by ships and submarines for navigation and to locate underwater objects. The use of sonar has been shown to have negative impacts on whales and other marine mammals. Whales rely on sound to communicate, navigate and find food. They use echolocation, a biological form of sonar, to locate prey and navigate in their environment. When they encounter intense sonar signals, it can disrupt their behavior and cause them to become disoriented or even stranded on shore. The loud sounds produced by sonar can also cause physical damage to whales. Some studies have suggested that exposure to high-intensity sonar can cause hemorrhaging in the ears and brain, which can lead to disorientation and even death. Whales are particularly vulnerable to sonar because they are highly social and rely on their ability to communicate with each other to survive. When their communication is disrupted by loud sonar signals, it can have a significant impact on their ability to find food and navigate in their environment. Overall, the use of sonar has been shown to have a negative impact on whale populations and efforts are being made to reduce its use in areas where whales are known to inhabit. So, what do you make of these beachings? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.